famous Bengali film director and um, economics professor, uh, Mr. Shuman Ghosh. Uh, welcome, Shumanda, to Bay Area. Thank you so much. It's an honor. OK, uh, Shumanda, um, as I said in my introductory note, um, not only a famous film director, but also an economics professor. How did this happen? So. Um, you know, it was not planned at all. When I was in Calcutta, I always harbored the, um, you know, wish of uh, making films as a lot of Bengalis influenced by the films of Shotujit Rai uh, and others have. Uh, but uh, in a middle class uh, household, that's not a viable venture oftentimes. So I used, you know, I carried on my academic uh, academics and uh, then I went to the US for my PhD in economics. And then I found out that the U.S. offers a lot of leeway and flexibility in the terms of the courses you can take. And my parents could not have afforded film school uh, in the U.S. So then I took, started taking courses in Cornell, uh, where I did my PhD in their film school. And that was the initial, uh, you know, uh, beginnings of uh, me trying to make uh, films. Yeah. But uh, when was this first planted, the seed planted? It was, uh, it, was it before coming to U.S. and Cornell, was, that, was there something back home also? Yeah, before also. Um, I, I remember when I was in college in Calcutta, uh, it started from there, the bug bit me then. And after coming to the U.S., uh, when I took, uh, I, I particularly remember when I uh, first um, did a course in 16 millimeter filmmaking and I looked through a camera and shot my first shot, uh, you know, that, that thrill and the kick uh, was unparalleled, I thought. So I, I, in a sense, then decided that probably I'll take this up uh, one day. Fascinating. Um, a national award in your first movie. Uh, tell us about uh, that. I never expected, uh, you know, national award. I just wanted to make one movie so that when I'm uh, towards the end of my life, I will not uh, crib that I did not do any films. So um, I had done that first film, you know, with borrowed money, savings, and all that uh, typical stories and all. And suddenly it got two national awards, the first film. And ever since then, it has. So it was a uh, uh, pleasant and very, very big surprise because I never expected that in my wildest imaginations. Um, you were. Um perhaps the only one who has worked so extensively with a legend like Mr. Shomitra Chatterjee. Uh, tell us a little bit about that association. Um, we all know what a legend he is, but uh, what, has, what have you found out while you have worked with him, your experiences, um, and like what one can learn from someone, like he's, he himself is an institution. So uh, if you can share something. So with Shomitra Chatterjee, that uh, my first film, which uh, you mentioned, the which got the National Award, he got the National Award also, the best actor in that film, Bodo Kip. And ever since then, uh, I, uh, he's like my own father now. It's such an association. And I think which strikes me even now when I go to Kolkata and have art, regular art does with him is his uh, curiosity, not only as an actor, but as a human being. He's 85 years old now, but so curious about so many things in life. And I think that drives his artistic endeavor also till date. Like, I think 40 years or 50, you know, have passed since he uh, came into films and uh, starting with Opu Shangshar. But he has that same uh, enthusiasm, the same urge to perform and to better his craft. And that is, I think, to learn for anyone who, uh, you know, we have achieved nothing in life, but uh, oftentimes we see that there is a, um, 
people submerge them in some kind of self-satisfaction and looking back and achievement. But Shomitra Chatterjee, even now, he doesn't look back what he has achieved, the you know, the legend and all. We say that, but I don't think even he has an iota of that in his mind. He has, he's still, the, oftentimes, I think he's the newcomer, so. Um, I wanted to uh, talk about um, the documentary on Professor Amartya Sen, uh, Argumentative Indian. Um, was it hard to have him agree to do something on uh, on him? Uh, what was the experience? So, um, uh, hard in the sense that um, when I approached him, he he's probably the, one of the busiest uh, scholars and academicians in the world. Even now, he's 86, I think. Uh, but uh, I have an association with uh, Amartya Sen because he is technically my academic grandfather in the sense my advisor at Cornell was Kaushik Basu and Kaushik Basu's advisor was Amartya Sen. So it's a lingo in academics we call, uh, f you know, academic father or academic grandfather. So when he had come to Cornell, I met him for the first time. I had, uh, you know, the idea of making a documentary on him one day. And I felt that he was very um, approachable and uh, very uh, comfortable person to be around. And then I had asked uh, Kaushik Da that whether I can uh, propose this to him. And, you know, I remember when I did propose to him, he was then the master of Trinity College in Cambridge. And we had a long conversation. And later we f I found out that, or I realized that it was basically an interview. Uh, of me, uh, where he wanted to see whether I have, whether he can, he will be um, uh, safe uh, in my hands, if uh, because this is the only documentary which exists on him. So it was not very difficult, I would say, uh, but, uh, you know, I had to go through a process, yeah. Um, Shuanda, we have seen you, you know, uh, moving from one genre to another and doing so so seamlessly. We, on one side, we have seen Podokhep, uh, then Nobel Thief, um, Kadombori, now Basuparibar. Um, is there uh, is there a favorite genre of yours, or uh, how does how does you uh, how do you you know uh, conceive a story? Or how do you decide like which film to make? I'm sure there are like hundreds of different stories in your mind. How do you zero down on that one film that you want to make? See, I don't consciously think of genres or something like that when I am planning a film. It is basically an idea which uh, should, uh, um, you know, urge me to desperately tell the story. So that might fall into historical fiction as in Kadambori or you know, uh, sort of a thriller as in Nobel Chor, uh, or I have made some very small esoteric films also. So I never think, uh, because I think that's a handicap if I, you know, think that, you know, this genre I won't do or this genre I won't do. So that has happened like that. So it was not a conscious choice, uh, you know. So it is a story comes to mind, and I have a desperate urge to tell that story, and that is how it flows. And, and if you can tell us a little bit about that, you know, process of taking something from a story or something that you have heard of uh, and then taking it to a script, from there to a screenplay and finally the film, how does that process work for you? See, it is, uh, for different films it's different. Uh, for example, some of the films it is inspired by a story or some of the films from a real life incident some of the films from a newspaper article which I uh, found. But typically, whatever is the source, after I read that, it, it has to stir me somewhere. And I don't uh, think about making a movie also, uh, uh, you know, until five, six months, when mm -hmm. even after five, six months, if that story still lingers in me and uh, I feel uh, that same urge, only then I start seriously thinking about it. And then there's a process where for three, four months, I just uh, imbibe that idea. And uh, basically, I'm setting the story in my head, because typically I write my scripts also. And then I start writing the, the scripts um, of the, so it's, it's like that, you know, for first five, six months, I have to be convinced that that story moves me enough. Then the next three, four months, I have to imbibe it and the story uh, formation happens in my head. And after that, I write the script. Mm -hmm. And after, of course, after I write the script, I have the actors in mind. I go to Kolkata, talk to the actors, whether they agree or not. 
and after that the process starts uh, it's a separate ball game altogether after from there from uh, yeah let's uh, move on to something which you are you know um, getting into um, hindi films right. uh, working in in bombay uh, you want to tell us a little bit about that how is that coming up what's the plan so uh, this film is called aadhar and it is being produced by uh, drishyam films who have done newton masan and such famous films uh, and it's co-produced by geo studios reliance geo studios and uh, we just uh, we we finished uh, shooting earlier this year in january february and now the post production is going on in bombay so it's a new journey for me in bombay and i'm loving it completely yeah sure i'm i'm sure like we are going to hear more about uh, that uh, in the coming days um i wanted to ask you about um the digital platforms you know um the explosion of the platforms uh how as a uh, director uh what do you think uh, is you know is changing or how do you see the future unfolding in terms about like of like telling stories in a different way or if you have any plans of you know exploring uh, those platforms what are your thoughts see first of all generally speaking uh, not what i uh, i have plans or not but it is a platform which you cannot ignore anymore and uh, i wouldn't go so far as to say that that is the only future of uh, cinema um but uh, definitely it it is an uh, avenue which uh, should be but i still think that uh, cinema viewing is a different experience and you see digital platforms have mushroom for the last 6 7 years also mm -hmm. but uh, at least for hindi films theatrical collections are equal if not better um, you know and of course they have the digital platform so i think it's good to think of it as complementary Uh, rather than you know this or that because there's a huge debate going on in hollywood also about mm -hmm. you know steven spielberg and all saying certain things about netflix, netflix and netflix saying these things i think these are complementary steven spielberg films you i everyone would still want to see it in large theaters but there are certain films small budget films maybe or whatever you know we have an avenue to explore um, you know which might not be viable for a theatrical release it might get into a digital platform and as far as me i have not thought about anything specifically but i'm generally open to it uh, maybe future i will take up something yeah shonda your films have done both commercially very well like kadambari has done like great box office at the same time um films like basu parivar has been you know applauded by film festivals like right. you recently premiered in new york indian film festivals what's the magic of having like uh, i mean you know something creating something which caters to like every type of audience again i don't consciously think about that i will cater to the box office and also the um, um film festivals as such but uh, definitely i want to reach to the world also i just don't want to make films for bengal only uh, though it is a bengali film i will be rooted to my bengaliness when i'm making the film but i want an general outreach and film festivals gives a, you know an assessment of yourself as a director also how universal or global you are making that film so it's an amazing experience you know my previous film was to watch say nobel chore how it is perceived in calcutta as against how it is perceived in london or carlo vivari or you know vancouver the places that i have been uh, new york and all so different uh, people of the world how they perceive your art i think that is a very um, curious thing i i want to see so uh, but it has happened that i have straddled both of them uh, somehow but it was not a conscious choice believe me is it difficult managing time between miami and bombay now yeah i have uh, it, it is uh, previously i could say that you know i was managing time very well in the sense that i loved coming back to the us and uh, the synonymity and teaching in an academic profession as against the you know hoopla of the film world and whatever but now uh, in bombay uh, you know i'm supposed to do another uh, hindi film uh, love story next year and uh, so the time commitment is uh, stressful i think uh, more for my family than me 
Shunda, you are one of the role models uh, in the sense that um, a lot of you know NRI is living here who want to you know, uh, follow their passion of doing something in the world of arts and culture, uh, but still you know, not being able to decide on how to take that plunge, how to you know, get into that. Any advices that you want to give to you know, next generation filmmakers, especially here in US, who wants to you know, live their dream like you? So first of all, if you want to make films in India as against here, it's different in the, the sense that in India physically you have to go there and stay. And my profession gave me that leeway uh, because I'm in an academic profession. We have a lot of, but people who are working in a corporate sector or whatever, it becomes extremely difficult, I understand. But you see, at one point you have to take the plunge. Nagesh Kukunur used to work here. He just left and, uh, you know, build a fantastic career. But again, one should take risk, but I always say calculated risk. It is foolish to just leave everything one fine morning and go and make films, and because film is a risky profession. And even I uh, cannot say that uh, you know I have completely taken the plunge. I still teach in my university, and you know uh, somehow it has luckily worked for me. But uh, I think if you really have the passion, uh, you live only once, so you should follow it up but uh, follow it up in a very calculated way rather than you know jump into it without anything so uh, i also had taken courses i prepared myself and be sure that you are capable of doing that rather than being attracted by the uh, glamour or glory of that world and then uh, do it so uh, yeah so calculated risk is the thing and follow your passions yeah Having a background of economic helps in that calculation, I'm sure. <laughs> Finally, Shuman, the um, Basu Parivar is being screened across US and Canada by Star Synergy Entertainment. Do you want to say anything about that? No, as I was saying in the introduction also that previously, you know, Bengali films, um, um, in contrast to the Hindi films or Tamil Telugu films, uh, would not have been screened here. And we always felt that in uh, makers of Bengali film that why is in theatrical distribution, uh, there are so many Bengalis uh, all around the world. And what Star Synergy is doing is a big first step. I know that there are very, um, you know, many hurdles uh, on the way, but this is just the beginning. And I'm so happy to see a full house in, uh, you know, uh, San Jose seeing uh, Boshu Podibar. And I'm sure other films also are being shown. So that is a big, big step. And I hope that the hurdles will be cleared soon and uh, the Bengalis will come out and watch uh, films in uh, full gusto as, for example, Tamil Telugu um, patrons have supported their industry. Thank you so much, Shumanda, for you know taking out time from your busy schedule, coming here, and uh, you know allowing us to have this opportunity to, of speaking with you. Uh, all the best for all your future projects. Um, uh, sure that we'll talk to you soon. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, my name is Shuman Ghosh. I am the director of the film Boshu Puribar, which you are seeing here, uh, and uh, you are watching me on Sitare TV. Be sure to watch Sitare every week to catch your favorite star profiles, celebrity interviews, community events, and more. Sitare TV. Sitare TV. Sitare TV. Right here on Sitare TV. Sitare TV. Sitare TV. Sitare TV. Sitare TV.